Hey everybody, this is Hauserl, host of All Things Jazz, and you're listening to T1 Radio. Hey everybody, you're, li- yeah, you're listening to T1 Radio, Pittsburgh's eclectic, positive, and underground Christian radio. I am your host, Hazel Robertson. I'm here, and I'm doing this interview with uh, Mr. Tony Campbell. I'm, I'm really excited to have him here. Uh, I've been looking forward to this all week. So, um, so how you doing, sir? All right, and you, Hazel, how are you? I'm, I'm, I'm doing great. Good. Um, one of the questions I wanted, to, I wanted to start this off with was... Um, how did you get started doing music? What what you know what what got you interested? You know. Well, this is kind of, kind of, kind of different. I um, I was at home and I heard the soundtrack from Shaft. You remember <laughs> Isaac Hayes' and Shaft? Okay. Okay. I heard the soundtrack, and originally there was a, a sax solo, and there was some bass stuff, and there was some vibes. And I wanted to play sax, I wanted to play vibes, and I wanted to play bass just from the soundtrack. I, so. I narrowed it down to saxophone. Okay. So that's what really made me start playing saxophone was that soundtrack. Really, that that, mm-hmm. <laughs> that that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, what made you decide to to play jazz? You know, specifically. Specifically jazz. Yeah. Um, I, my father. Okay. Um, he's not a musician, but around the house, I heard Illinois Jacket. I heard Duke Ellington. I heard Sil Austin. I heard Cannonball Adderley. Okay. He was an avid saxophone uh, lover. He loved he loved jazz. We loved saxophone. He loved Thelonious Monk as well. Yeah. Okay. So I came up in a funk band called the Deltones from the Hill District. That's how I bought this horn I have. Uh, and so I was around the house playing David Sanborn or like uh, Grover Washington stuff. And he said, "Here, when you really want to play, this is something that you should listen to this." And he gave me Cannonball Adderley's "Live at the Lighthouse." And from that moment on, I knew that I was going to be a jazz musician. I knew I was going to go to college for, for music when I was in eighth grade. By tenth grade, I knew I was going to go. He gave me that record. Then when I got older, I heard Charlie Parker, and that was it. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was hooked. It's funny you should say that. My, my dad was part of the reason why I actually started picking up jazz because um, mm-hmm. what, what, um, there's this segment that they would play uh, on something called the Worship Channel. Mm-hmm. And it had this sound of this music. And I'm like, wow, I really like it. I don't know what it is, though. Yeah. You know, and then I found that it was jazz. And mm-hmm. then uh, a couple of years later, I had the opportunity to uh, learn jazz from the Afro-American Music Institute. Yeah, that's, that's, how, that's how the jazz is. It's, we, I, it's, it's funny. We tease. It's like a vampire. Once it bites you, you're hooked. You're, you're, you're in, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now, um, what were some of the artists that you played with, you know, uh, coming up, you know, from, um, from your career? Well, I um, I got my first break with Roy Ayers uh, 1982. I was 22. I played with Roy Ayers uh, that year in the spring. And then my first jazz, well, that's, that, that was a jazz gig. But my other gig was with Roger Humphreys. Okay. And it was in Cleveland uh, that same year. <laughs> so... That's, that's where I got my start, and through the years, I, I like I've gone to school. I played with Wynton Marcellus and okay. Branford, right. um, Sean Jones, obviously, um, uh, Gene the Gene Ludwig's from Pittsburgh, um, oh, countless others. You know that that we've got a chance to to, to do things with. Something else I wanted to talk about. I I know that uh, I know that you you picked up jazz, but how do you how do you feel like it it's affected you know you, you personally. Uh, well, jazz, um, it has changed my life. It, it's my philosophy on looking at life and dealing with people. Jazz is a very spiritual music. Yeah. So, uh, and your personality is involved with it. And through the study of jazz, you study personalities, you study the spirituality of the, mm-hmm. of the musicians, mm-hmm. you study their, uh, their passion, their ups, their downs. Right. And so it helps you in the course of life. Uh-huh. You know, it, it really helped me to be a better person. Mm-hmm. I know when I studied with Howard Howard Alexander at, mm-hmm. um, at um, the AMI, he was always talking about, you know, there's that other level. You know, there's playing the music and then there's really playing the music. And when you start to connect with other musicians on that on that deeper level and you can start to feel each well, other. Well, that's the spiritual level. I get chills now thinking about it. Yeah. That's the spiritual level of yeah. jazz. Um, it's the, the inner connection with the other musicians and it's totally nonverbal. Right. So that's that's the essence of it. Yeah. Yeah. I know when I started playing with my brothers, we'd play jazz, and um, we had this really deep connection. I could communicate with my eyes. I just look at them, and they knew right what to do. Exactly. Right. And there's always another level. There's always a deeper level, mm-hmm. and always a deeper or higher level. There's all. It's like just like spirituality. There's always another level. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
And that's actually that it's kind of funny. You kind of, it's kind of like it sounds like you're talking about oneness, you know? Absolutely. And that's actually what um what the name T1 stands for. With T1 Radio, it stands okay. for truth and oneness, uh-huh. and you know unity with yes. with, the, with with each other. Um, but moving on to um my next question is, where do you see jazz going now? Ah, uh, that's a very interesting question because it's a mix. It's it's becoming disconnected. Because in a society now, it's such a, 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 a immediate gratification and I I kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's becoming disconnected from the roots of jazz, and the people coming up now think that it started with them, and it's losing the elements of swing, oh, okay. and it's losing the elements of blues. So, what we're trying to do is is stay modern but still have the traditional elements. Because without the traditional elements, it's you can't really perpetuate and say that you are moving jazz in a certain direction. True, you know. Right. It's just trying to grow, grow, grow crops and not have the, the proper seeds or the proper. You can't grow greens if you don't have the, the proper seeds, you know, and, and, and right nourishment for it. So, okay, that is a, a perplexing thing for us because there's so many styles of music now, and there's so many new musics mm-hmm. that you really want to keep the tradition going by having the roots of the blues, the spirituality, and swing. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. That's what we're looking at now. As an educator, what are some of the things that 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 you that your students took away from uh, from from learning from you? Well, hopefully, a deeper understanding of the music and how it affects your daily life, mm-hmm. and and that there's many aspects to the music. You don't have to just play it. You know, you can write it, you can produce it. Mm-hmm. There's there's many facets to it. So, hopefully, they'll take something. Even if it's just, I want to wake up in the morning and feel good. Right. You know, I could put on something I know it makes me feel good and makes me happy. Mm-hmm. So if, even if it's that little thing, you know. And finally, this is this is my last question for you. Okay. What are your plans for your, for your career? What do you, where do you see yourself, you know, going? I know you've you've had a long career already, but you know, and what else do you see yourself doing? You know. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I want to finish the educational part of it. I want to, you know, continue to teach. Um, but there's a performance thing I, I, I would like to get done. I, I like to do major projects because mm-hmm. I've done uh, Love Supreme, which is John Coltrane work. Okay. I've done Fiddler on the Roof. It's uh, Cannonball Adley. I like to do major work. So I want to do a Charlie Parker with strings. You know, that that's the famous recording he's had. Okay. Uh, and I want to continue to travel, and I want to continue to write. I, there's some other projects I want to write, like uh, a nine-piece Latin kind of jazz Afro-Cuban band. And there's some other things that, you know, I really look forward to. Yeah. Okay. But uh, thank you, Mr. Campbell, for, for coming out and hanging out with us. Um, I'm, 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 I'm so happy that you were able to do this with you, and hopefully though, this will help people, you know, learn more about you and uh, learn some more about, you know, T1 Radio. Well, thank you. It's been a true blessing to be here, and I, I'm so thankful that you all asked me to do this. I appreciate you. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. You guys have been listening to T1 Radio, Pittsburgh's Eclectic Positive and Underground Christian Radio. I am your host, Hazel Robertson, and this is All Things Jazz. All Things Jazz. Thank you, and have a blessed day. Hey, I'm Wei. I'm Simeon. This is Hell's Roll. This is James. And, and you're, you're listening, listening to T1 Radio. Radio.